Tony, Tony, of course, the super middleweight champion. He had that great win over Iran Barkley. And let's now go to Ed Darien. We're back at Fernwood Resort and Country Club here in Bushkill, Pennsylvania, as Top Rank and Fist of Cuff Productions in association with Budweiser, the king of beers, proudly present Top Rank Boxing's main event. Our judges, Harold Letterman, Jackie Castellani, and David Greer. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round super middleweight bout, referee Frank Cappuccino. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the red corner, wearing the Army fatigue trunks. He weighed in at an even 165 pounds. All the way from Climito, Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. He is the IBC middleweight champion. He has 25 wins, nine losses with 19 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Daniel Popeye Garcia. Garcia. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the gold trim. He tipped in at even 169 pounds. From Ann Arbor, Michigan, he has 37 wins, no losses, two draws, with 25 knockouts. He is the IBF Super Middleweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, here is James. Lights out, Tony. Tony. Good evening, gentlemen. You were both given your instructions. Both of you touch gloves. Come on. Here's a look at Danny Garcia. Garcia has lost his last two fights, actually. The one to Lamar Parks, a fight that he very easily could have won. But he also lost to Chris Pyatt in Leicester, England. That was back in January. Lost a 12-round decision for the WBC Intercontinental middleweight title. And James Tony, on the other hand, has been staying very busy. We've seen him here on Top Rank Boxing a couple of times against Glenn Thomas and earlier than that against Ricky Thomas. Won both of those. And won them each rather handily. I don't see anything on the line here that says he won this uh, IBC thing, whatever that might be. <laughs> where true, where did this yes. title come from and how did he win that? That's uh, fascinating. In any case, one of the many mysteries in boxing. Uh, you see the knockout ratio uh, of the two gentlemen. Tony, uh, a powerful puncher. So is Garcia, though. And right away, he's going with the left hook. And if you're going to hit James Tony with a power punch, better it should be the left hook for you than the right. It's hard to hit with the right hand. My other thought is that if you're going to fight with James Tony, you're going to get knocked out. Ultimately, you may not knock you out early, but no, mostly, yes, if you're going to stay there and exchange with him because he throws good, quick combinations and lands a lot of punches against him. And James Tony, just an excellent defensive fighter. We talked a little bit earlier about some of the angles that he can give you, and he's tough. Yeah, that's one of his, and, and that's something he's gotten infinitely better at in the, the last year or two, last couple of years since he's been a champion. He wants to step up and fight Prince Charles Williams, and I, I think that'd be an excellent fight. Well, actually, they want Williams to come down to 168. Right, yeah, right. and then, then he would step up to uh, to light heavyweight. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go, Daniel. And Williams is interested in that. We talked to him just a few weeks ago. All right. All right. See Garcia trying to get that left hook in. Strong jab by Tony. Tony does have the kind of body that looks like it could handle up to light heavyweight. Yeah, they're even talking cruiserweight, which may be a bit extreme, but light heavyweight. Well, he's practically a light heavyweight now right. at 168. Or once he had to lose a pound to get down to this weight. you can hit Tony. Look at look at the right hand missed by Garcia. He looks so available for those punches, especially the right hand, but it's just not there. When I ran Barkley fought him for the super middleweight title, I ran Barkley was in great shape, highly motivated, 
little bad blood going on. He just could not land the punch. It was just so hard for him to land against him. Yeah, I think, you know, the old phrase that they use both in baseball and football, that you take what's given to you can easily be used to describe what James Tony does. He makes the adjustment to what his opponent is doing. Coming to the end of the first round, and it's been a round in which Garcia has not been able to execute, and Tony has done basically whatever he's wanted to do in this round. End of one. Arsenal, there's an example, an uppercut that lifts the head of Danny Garcia on the inside. That was right at the end of the first round. We start the second round now. First round, Tony uh, getting a lot of work in. And landing well, 38 out of 81. A lot of those are body shots. When you see the numbers of punch profile, you have trouble with his trucks, James Tony. He's much, even much more so than he is with Garcia. Yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, when you see the numbers of punch profile, <laughs> Garcia puts his hand out and Tony says, I don't think so. I don't want to shake hands with you. We're, we're in here fighting and I, I just would prefer not to. <laughs> I was trying to make, and if they interrupt me one more time making this point, I swear I'm not going to talk the rest of the day. The, uh, uh, the numbers of punch profiles show you body shots, and it's important to note because a fighter like Tony will land a lot of body shots. Tony has just not let Garcia get on track, period. Has taken, interestingly enough, a different course from Terry Norris. He has a good right hand by Tony. Terry Norris, since he's become the champion, since he beat Sugar Ray Leonard, has basically been invisible. Except when he fights. Well, he's had, yeah, he's had some fight. I mean, he's had his fights. I'm not saying he hasn't fought, but he's been invisible. And and James Tony, on the other hand, is by his own admission, he says, I'm taking these fights because he knows there's three million people watching the show every week. Yeah, I think, I, I know what you're getting at. Tony has tried to stay a little bit more workmanlike and put himself out there in, 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 in these non-title fights. And that's different than most guys. Well, there's, there's a school of thought that says Terry Norris missed an opportunity to really capitalize when he beat Sugar Ray Leonard. I think basically that's true. But I, and I think part of it was they thought they were fighting the kind of guys who would give them marquee value, the Mel Dutellers and Donald Curry's. It didn't quite work out that way. But Terry Norris is in a, still in a pretty good position. Uh, yeah, I'm not criticizing Terry Norris. Yeah, I know what you mean. Nice hook by Garcia, and that's the punch that he wants to land very badly. A good idea not to leave it out there, though. Yeah, as, as Tony showed by, by countering with the right hand. Why well, we, we talked about it last week, this middleweight muddle thing. They're all out there in the middleweight and super middleweight division. And boy, there's a lot of great matches. James Tony wants to figure in them, but he ain't, he's not going to wait for anybody. Well, the fight that James Tony fought against Iran Barkley, and I've been around this sport for 20 or so years, that was almost as complete a performance as I've ever seen. End of two. And James Tony comes to the center of the ring to meet Danny Garcia. You can see how well James Tony has done, 48%. He's a very accurate puncher, and often is in the 40 to 50 percent range. Garcia and his people this morning very confident that they could hurt James Tony. They said if he lands a shot like we want him to land, it's really good hook. We think he'll hurt Tony. Remains to be seen, but he is certainly laying it out there. Danny Garcia is making an effort with that hook. But the hand speed of Tony giving him some trouble. Get him loose, get him loose, James. Get him loose, James. Garcia doing a lot of laying on Tony in this round. Can't be tired. Right? Combination punching for Tony that uh, we talked about before. Tony 
does have a mandatory defense against Darren Van Horn that is set for September. Left hand hurt Garcia. Now Garcia not really making the fight being aggressive. Maybe he wants to counter Tony a little bit or try. I think that Darren Van Horn fight hanging over the head of James Tony like an anvil. It's really not about anybody wants it. No. Darren is not ranked number one, but just I don't think it's about that anyone thinks he can win against James Tony. And uh, I don't think he even uh, went to a purse bid. Don King got the purse bid, then he lost it. Now I think uh, Bob Arum has it. And, uh, it's a match that, like you say, is hanging there. It has to happen. And uh, then right after that, they, uh, maybe they'll do Williams, and they want to move up to light heavyweight. Garcia going after Tony, but it's so deceptive when you see this, because, like we said, Tony slips and blocks a lot of those punches, as he did right there. And in truth, he looks like he's toying with Garcia right now. Yeah, Tony has the look of a man who could get this guy out of here whenever he chooses. And I don't mean to say that he's carrying him. I just think he wants the work. Not a bad left hand there by Garcia. Garcia's probably all right as long as he doesn't make him mad. <laughs> I remember that happening with Ray Leonard when he fought Bruce Finch. And told me he was going to let him go seven rounds. And then Finch hurt him in the second round, and he knocked him out about two. After all, the guy who goes back a few years. PGA champion, Bruce Devlin and Reese McBee and Doug Ford. We got so many great players, but a lot of the great celebrities I talked to, guys like Mike Ditka is going to come up for a few days and work on his game, and Alan Shepard, the first American to ever go into space, Trini Lopez, and I uh, even talked to uh, the vice president the other day, Quayle, the former vice president, and maybe he might come up. Those but things are always great fun, more fun for the amateurs, I'm sure, than they are for the pros, to be honest with you. Well, to, to be able to have these guys to do something of it together and to get the, the great tips from them and to just have a lot of fun, this is really going to be something new that's never been done. I got to tell you, Doug, I've covered a lot of sports in my life. I had a chance to do a little bit of golf in, uh, in the last couple of years as a group of athletes, the nicest guys. And you, of course, absolutely no exception to that rule. Well, I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a great day. It's an easy number, 1-800-PRO-DOUG. Uh, All right, that's the deal. And the tournament is the first, the second week of September, the 5th through the 9th of September. That's when the tournament is, and it's right here. The inaugural Dream Golf Tournament. Doug, thanks for being with us. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Doug Sanders, the man who uh, his shoes could not be copied and neither could his swing. Great. <laughs> <laughs> my fond memories of Doug Sanders as a golfer. Al man had curb shoes to go with every pair of pants. <laughs> a Bob Brummel. He really was. And James not a bad golfer. And he had that funny swing that if you looked at it in the golf books, you would say, no way. James James Tony uh, landed 21 of 25 jabs in the round three. And that is, that is almost uncharacteristic of him because he is not normally that accurate with the jab. You know he's got a good punch. Right hand from Garcia there, but Garcia just not able to deter Tony at all. And that did it. The right hand started it, the left hand finished it. Well, in truth, I think James Tony, when he got around to doing that, was going to do it. Garcia trying to hold on. Still a long way to go in his fourth round. Well, at 168, James Tony's got it all working, I'm telling you. And uh, even if Danny Garcia isn't up to the task here tonight, and he apparently is not, it shows what Tony's capable of. Very low blow by Danny Garcia. Extremely. Now, this is the kind of thing that makes a champion mad. Yeah. Just what you were talking about. They yes. deducted a point, which is the last thing in the world Danny Garcia needs here. I think James Tony really shook up by that love love. And uh, he may take a little breather here and then uh, go right out in the fifth round and go after him again. Tony's right on top of him once more. Good left hand drives him into the ropes. Can't be saved by the bell, remember. Oh. And another really huge shot. Wow, wow. Garcia, Garcia wants that fight now. No reason for Garcia to go after him after the bell. 
And the corner of Garcia trying very hard to keep calm. They didn't jump in there to try and make a problem. And give James Tony some credit for keeping his cool there. And you saw the names of the corner. I will be shocked and amazed if this fight goes more than another round. As will I. This is James Tony knocking Garcia down with the right hand. Excellent combination. Double left hook. That's what makes him a very polished fighter. You can, he always finishes his combination. Look at those body shots. First one really hurt him. And uh, it, ironically, even though the freight train right hand was a pretty good punch, it was the body shot that got Garcia down. Very skilled fighter, James Tony. Frank Cappuccino going into both corners and really reading the riot act to Danny Garcia's corner, but he also was rather stern in Tony's corner, too. And Tony basically said, what I do? <laughs> well, he absorbed those punches at the end. There's a right hand, and this one's not going to go far. I, 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 can't, I can almost assure you this. Yeah, Tony wants this over with. He wants to get him out of there, and he will get him out of there. Good body shot. Well, Garcia obviously having a much worse outing than he did against Lamar Park. Well, I think James Tony is, is even that much yeah. better than Lamar Park. It, it, yes, especially at 168. <laughs> That's to take nothing away from Parks, but at this weight, he just, he's very tough to beat. That's not taking anything away from Garcia, too. No. Garcia can probably beat 90% of the super middleweights out there. But, you know, it's a case of a mule is not going to win a Kentucky Derby. I don't care how many times he runs or how fast he is. The key to probably to this fight ending is continued body work by James Tony. And you can see that Tony knows that James Tony's a student of boxing, watches a lot of old films, talked to us this morning about, uh, he knows the current crop of fighters in boxing, knows what they can do. He's got all the whole arsenal. Got Garcia turned around nicely, hit him with the left hand, came with the right behind it. You know, he's just looking for the right opportunity. And I'll, I'll stand by what I said before, this fight will not go past this round. I don't know how to turn around. Yeah, well, <laughs> should I yell up to James Tony to make him look like a hero? I break. Well, if it does go beyond this, it shouldn't. <laughs> Garcia has offered virtually nothing offensively at, at this point in the bout. Uppercut, that hurt Garcia, even though he gives it the smug look. Tony working the body almost exclusively in this round, except when he got Garcia turned around. We come to the end of the fifth round, and James Tony made a liar out of me, folks. We'll be back. Tony coming with the counter right hand when he had uh, Garcia against the ropes, and then he's landing a high percentage of jabs, and uh, there you see a good example of it. He's landing a high percentage of just about everything. Yes. And the target practice continues as we start the sixth round. In the fifth round, <laughs> boy, look at this number. Pretty even bout, huh? Yeah. and hit it. Garcia keeps smiling at him, but boy, I, uh, Tony has whacked him with some huge punches. The head shots are not knocking him down, though. It was the body shot that did it. Well, Garcia's just doing nothing, period, offensively, it's, and that's what's making this less than scintillating. He's just got nothing, and he's not throwing anything, and I think it's even making it boring for Tony, because Tony wants some competition. Yeah, I think so, too. I think he's just playing with him right now. You know, Tony, Tony does that to fighters as well. 
He makes he makes guys he makes guys look even worse than they are. Right now, Danny Garcia is helping him. Yes. Double right hand. One of the things when you look at Tony uh, is, is that he puts his punches together in a way that not that many fighters do. See, everything is in combination. Does not stop with one punch. Cappuccino with a warning to keep the punches closed. I saw Garcia hit Tony with a right hand. Tony didn't move. Tony now just can do literally anything he feels like in the ring. You know, James Tony's not a one-punch knockout kind of guy, so if a guy doesn't go from a series of punches, he'll stay for a while. Uh, great, great. The, the, the notable exception was when he hurt Michael Nunn badly, because Nunn had won virtually every round, most rounds, right. but was real tired, and the left hook that, that Tony drew was perfect. Now, now he hurt him. And the body shots are doing part of the damage now. Yeah, I think so, too. Garcia almost went, caught himself halfway down. There's a right hand. It appears Garcia is going to get through the sixth round, too, and he does. Which is equally astonishing. Yes. Going to go into the corner of Danny Garcia, although the language of choice here will be Spanish. Garcia is standing. taking a lot of punishments from James Stone. They may be thinking about whether this one's going to go on. And I have a feeling they might be saying enough is enough. I think they might be, but I don't think Danny is. This is Tony when he had him on the ropes. Landing it's over. Combination. It's over. I don't mean to interrupt you, Al. As we look at some of this action, they have decided that uh, that was enough. And as far as I'm concerned, it was. Yeah, it was about two rounds before. And I think you're absolutely right. They were talking about the body shots as being really the thing that will not allow Danny Garcia to go on. And, and I think also that uh, part of the problem is that uh, when Tony throws those body shots early in the fight, they're so debilitating that you just can't do what you want in the middle, middle and later rounds. We saw that with some other fighters that were better, that fought better than Garcia. We're going to have an opportunity to look uh, back on one of the great fights of all time, as a matter of fact. At least the time that I've been doing this sport, Hagler and Leonard, place in Las Vegas. A fight that a lot of people feel Sugar Ray Leonard stole. Certainly a great event, that's for sure. Yeah, it was a tremendous event. We await the official decision as no problem. Ed Darien with a bit of a problem right here. But I can tell you for a fact, James Tony is the winner. We do that. The fight was stopped at the end of six rounds because Danny Garcia could not continue. And now let's uh, find out officially. Ladies and gentlemen, Principal Daniel Papai Garcia, unable to continue. Therefore, referee Frank Cappuccino stops this bout at the end of the sixth round, and a winner by a TKO, James Lights Out Tony. Well, James Tony, the winner, technical knockout at the end of the sixth round, and next for him, a title shot with Darren Van Horn. We'll be back to talk with the champion after this. The Pocono Mountains, we always told you this was a family show. Let's get up to the center of the ring. We'll show you why. That would be Jasmine, <laughs> uh, possibly the cutest person in this ring, uh, meaning no offense to anyone else. Uh, okay, congratulations on your win, James. He got you a little mad with that low blow, didn't he? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, first thing first, I want to say congratulations to my brother Brian and his, his fiance Stephanie to get married in May. Hello, right. Carmen. Happy birthday on Tuesday. Elizabeth, everybody. Everybody back at home. I love y'all. Can't get everybody in, but hello. All right. Good performance tonight. You fought very well. Oh, yeah. I fought a good fight, you know. Tied to the fight because the guy is kind of strong. Made a good left hook. But, you know, we got the job done. 
We still undefeated. We the best. Right. I'm challenging anybody out there. Prince Charles Williams, you called me out last month. Bring your butt. I'm going to take care of you after I get done with Darren Van Horn, September 20th, baby. What's up, Bob Bam? We're going to get busy. And Don King, you know what you did. You know what you did? We on TV. We on TV. I can't say your name. I can't say everything I want to say, but you know what you did. I don't. I'm with you forever, baby. Forever. Okay, I don't think I have to ask any more questions. I think he's pretty much covered the litany of things. But you're going to fight Van Horn, then you want Prince Charles Williams, definitely 168. And you will you move up to light heavyweight? Uh, hopefully we get a chance to fight um, Jeff Hardy and Virgil Hill, whoever. Okay. You know, right. I don't know nobody. All right, congratulations. Good win, James. Excuse me? Good win. Oh, thank you very much, Val. <laughs> Please give attention to Jasmine, and why not? She's a cutie. Let's go back down to ringside now. No, my baby. pal, Mary Tompkins. All right, thanks very much. Well, he got it all in. <laughs> Jasmine is a cutie. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a fight that took place in April of 1987. I had the pleasure of being here to call that fight.